and uh, today I'm starting my new uh, tutorial series on uh, delegates or delegate methods, not uh, precisely delegates. Um, now I have already posted a couple of videos on this but personally I didn't think that they were the best videos in the world so I thought I'd start it off with basically giving you a little brief overview of what we're going to be doing and uh, what delegates are, um, well delegate methods. Um, and as you can see here I've got the Apple documentation uh, up here about delegates and data sources and it says a delegate is an object that acts on behalf of or in coordination with another object when that ob object encounters an event in a program. Um, so what that means in simple terms is that when a certain when one object uh, encounters an event it will ask a delegate I mean uh, it will kind of the it's basically a way of sending messages between two kind of objects so one object will be like, um, hey, do you want me to close the keyboard for a text field? And then you can say uh, return yes for yes or return no for no. Or you can set some other methods and stuff. Um, and that will basically allow it allow you to do it. So you can you can read this. As you can see here, it says, to better appreciate the value of delegate delegation, it helps to consider an off-the-shelf COCA object such as the text field. So that's what we're going to be looking at, and also there's the table view here, and you've already used table view delegate methods, and probably you didn't know about it. Uh, well, that's only if you've, um, you know, done a uh, UI table view. You've already used UI table view delegate methods. So again, uh, I will put this in the description. You can read through it, um, and here I'm just going to go through this kind of little thing window thing here. So uh, basically, uh, it's kind of self-explanatory this thing, but. Basically, what happens is someone's just clicked the X button on this window, and what this window does, it doesn't have a method in its in its uh, file that says, "Okay, they've clicked everything. Let's close it down." It actually looks to a delegate, and it says, "They just clicked the button. Do you want to close?" And the delegate will then say, "Uh, no, don't close," or "Yes, do close." And that delegate is controlled by you. You can you can control whether to say no or whether to say yes. So again, this is more a detailed version of what this is doing. Uh, it basically says one, you can read the numbers here for the uh, thing, it goes one window should close. The delegate then goes, um, I've got some decisions to make first, let me make a decision. Uh, okay, actually they haven't saved it, so I'm going to go to two, go down here, they've clicked save, so then we can go back and say yes. If they click cancel, then it will just normally just go back to what it was before. Or if they click don't save, it will go close. However, if the decision is they have saved, then it will skip straight to three, uh, straight to four, sorry, and just go yes. So that's uh, a bit more kind of um, detail, well, a little kind of background information. But if you think about it, it's literally a way of sending messages, brief little quick messages between uh, like two objects. Uh, and it's obviously it's really useful. Um, so again, we'll be doing a lot of uh, I'll be doing a lot of all these delegate methods that you should know um, because it will it will save you. So I, like I said, I'm going to be going over the text field ones, the alert view ones, the table view ones, uh, and a lot more um, uh, to to give you these methods and tell you what they do and show you what they do. Um, so you can so you can. Uh, break down on your coding, um, you don't have to code as much, you don't have to duplicate your code because delegates happen for everything. So like if I have a delegate for text fields, it will apply to every single text field, no matter if it's connected by a thing or not, um, it will just apply to every single de text field or every single table view or every single window or every single UI alert view. So I don't need to duplicate my code for every single text field. I can just put it into one delegate method and then that's done. Um, so just a little thing here that we're going to be doing for our um, for our UI table view, uh, UI text field, sorry, uh, delegate methods. Um, I, again, I will explain all this for you, but if we build and run here, you can see we have text fields here in a scroll view. First of all, the first thing you'll notice is I use a delegate to move the scroll view into view with the text fields. So as you can see, the other text field uh, is, is hidden now. And if I were to click on that text field, normally, the one down here, by the way, if I were to click on that text field, normally the keyboard will cover it and I won't be able to see what I'm typing. 
what we're going to do is going to use a text field method to know when they've clicked on the text field and to move the scroll view up and away so they can see what they're typing. Then when we click done, a delegate method will then close it and it will return the scroll view to back where you were. So we're going to learn that. Then we're also going to learn how to return the keyboard, which is a pretty simple one. Um, as some of you probably already know it. And we're also going to learn how to use the should change character in range method. Now this is a really basic way of using it, uh, just for the sakes of this tutorial to show you what's going on. If I type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it won't allow me to type more than 7 characters. If you can see here, if I'm typing here, it won't allow me to uh, type any more. If I delete, I can type in more until I get to 7. So that is useful for some sort of username or password thing. So you're not allowed more than 12 characters in your username or something like that. Um, you can use that to prevent them from entering characters. So if you don't, if you want this keyboard, but you don't want them to enter one, two, three, four, five, and six, you don't want them to enter numbers. You can restrict the should character change in range and set tell them tell it well if you're entering numbers, then don't allow it. Um, and again, we can click on text fields; it will move the scroll view out the way, and then we can return back to normal. Um, so yeah, there you go, that's just a quick overview of what we're going to be learning. We will learn more about the text field delegates other than that. Um, and also we we will be going on to, like I said, uh, UI uh, table views, UI alert views, and other delegate methods that I'll find out uh, and provide you guys with. So there you go, that's my intro to delegate methods. Again, uh, this file, uh, this link will be in the description for you to go have a look. Um, as you can see here, it gives you the things that have delegates in them. Uh, so yeah, just have a read of that so you get your mind around delegates and what they do. Um, so yeah, look forward to my, well hopefully you're going to look forward to my next uh, project, uh, which is going to be the UI table view, uh, UI text field, sorry, <laughs> I, keep, I keep saying the wrong thing. So find that there, um, UI text fields when it's out, and that will be uh, a small series on its own. And then it will obviously go on to the table views and UI alert views and such. So again, thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe and give me a like on this video if you want me to carry on with these tutorials um, so I know if it's good or not to start. Um, so make sure you give me a like, don't forget to comment and subscribe, don't forget, to, don't forget to click on the ads in some of my videos and don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Failcake Apps. a little thing should appear down there. So again, thanks for watching and see you in my next tutorial.